Once in a while you come across product and ideas that simply blow your mind. And in open source, not surprisingly, you come across such product and ideas quite often. Open source is a place where innovation actually happens, right? And it shouldn't be a surprise that DAS is an area where certainly a lot of innovation has took place in the last few years. We started with something like Firebase, which brought uh, back inside functionalities to the masses. You got serverless functions, you got Firestore, which was like a NoSQL DB engine for your products and applications. And then you got multiple different products out on top of it. This area further got innovated with something like Superbase. Pocketverse is one such product we can't just let go at this point of time, I feel like, because it's a BAS solution, a backend as a service solution that could probably fit in your pocket, which means this entire BAS is self-contained and it's all available in a binary file you can just download and run from command line and you get a real-time database, authentication, file storage, and admin dashboard, all within the same package, right out of the box. Pocketbase is an open source backend for your next SaaS and mobile app in one file, which means it's self-contained, it's one file binary, and it shifts with functionalities beyond CUD operations. If you look at the documentation, it's just one binary you need to download and install and eventually run on your system, right? You could download it for a Linux system or Windows or one of your Mac OS systems, right? And then once it's installed, you just need to run one serve command from your command line to, you know, kickstart the pocket based server. And it's really amazing there because the key differentiator, I'd say, for pocket base is its portability. In the BAS platform you have used so far, you would have seen that BAS platforms require its setup, right? It's either cloud hosted or it could be self hosted, you know, with some configuration and steps followed. But eventually, it's not actually portable in the sense that you cannot just download and get going with it, right? And on top of it, offering something like a real-time database and authentication and admin dashboard that you'd expect out of a premium product in an open source solution, which you can just carry from one system to another, from your local machine to the cloud, uh, from your desktop to the containerized environments, it's simply amazing, right? So let's just individually dissect these features and understand what these features are all about and you know and what they are actually right so first there is a real-time database right which means that you have a database but beyond the credit operations that you could actually perform with your database you have a way to listen to those changes you can simply subscribe to the changes that are occurring in your DB in your tables and then you can carry out operations based on top of it second you have authentication available which means you won't have to reinvent the wheel and you, you won't have to create your own solutions or abstractions over some authentication you'd like to offer through your application, right? It's all built in. It's all integrated part of the pocket-based system. Besides the tables, you have a specific table authenticated for users, which you can use to authenticate and identify and authorize your users, both with the simple email and password model, as well as OAuth2 model, right? Besides authentication, you have functionality to support file uploads, which can be locally persisted or could be directly uploaded to S3 storage. Plus, on top of it, besides real-time database, authentication, file storage, there's an admin dashboard. Since it's a key part of the pocket-based offering, the admin dashboard is simply mind-blowing. You don't see such, you know, thoughtful UX, you know, out of an open source solution too often, right? Plus, beyond all of the functionalities you would expect to receive out of your next BAS as a front-end engineer or a full-stack engineer or a Node.js engineer, if you are a Go engineer, you can actually extend PocketBase. You can extend its routes. You can listen to the different events that happen with the table 
in the database that uh, that pocket bills is based on and you can carry out different operations and function based on the interesting events you have subscribed to right something like on record after upgrade request you can just simply listen to it right or you can just simply listen to a mailing event to carry out or do something else right let's explore all of these features once First, go ahead and download the binary that's applicable to your platform. You can download the Linux version if you are on a Linux system or the Windows version if you are on a Windows system or the Mac OS version. Right. Once you have this downloaded, extract the zip file so that you have something like this available in the directory you have downloaded this. Right. Once you have this downloaded, just extract it. You'll get a pocket based binary file which is the self-contained binary that needs to be kind of run or moved, you know, or copied to a system to get this uh, pocket base uh, instance running. The very first time you'll start this pocket base, uh, it will create a directory for you called PB data or pocket base data, which contains a data DB and a logs DB. DataDB is used uh, for the database. LogsDB is used for the DB logs. Right. So that's it. I mean, it's as simple as downloading this uh, zip file, extracting it, and then running it. Right. So let's just go ahead and run this. We are currently on 0 0.12.0 version, which is the latest. And it's not stable yet. Right. If you go back to the documentation, they say that please keep in mind that pocket base is still under active development and fully backward compatibility is not guaranteed before reaching V1.0.0, which is all right. But even for uh, 0.12.0 version, it's quite stable for the basic use cases uh, like CRUD operations, real time operations and other things. Right. And the core experience just works magically. Right. So once you have this binary downloaded, you can go inside the directory that has this downloaded and you can run the command to actually run uh, the pocket base server, which is pocket base, the binary file and serve command, right? As soon as you run this, you will see your application hosted on at 090 and the API is being available at API. So this is the API that actually gets called to retrieve the, you know, uh, the records from the DB or the tables, right? Which are called collection in pocket basis uh, terminology. And there's an admin UI also, right? Currently, uh, 8090 port is occupied on my system. So we'll just go ahead and change the port to something that's not preoccupied right so once we have this available uh, we can simply open the admin panel let's just go ahead and open the admin panel the very first time you'll open this admin panel you'll have to create a user account let's just go ahead and create a user account Password could be anything at this point. It says something went wrong, so yep. Not down. So as soon as your user account is created, which is the first admin account for your pocket base instance, you'll be greeted with this interface where you'll see there's a left panel, a section to search the collection, and then you are landed by default to the user's uh, screen inside collections, right? So collections are tables. Oh, uh, and the very first table, which is primarily available within a pocket base instance is the users. So as soon as you log in for the first time, or uh, every recurring time, you know, you'll be greeted with this interface where you'll have a left panel uh, with the collections, right? To list all of the collections, then there's a logs around all the things, you know, that uh, go behind the scenes, right? So admin auth with password. So this is the kind of the call that happened for uh, authenticating the very first user, right? And then there was a say API admins call, right? Because we are creating an account. 
So you can see a log for all of the activities that are performed with uh, pocket base offered API, right? And then you have something called settings, which you use to kind of change the application name, change its URL, uh, log retention period. You can change the mail settings, right? You can change the file storage. If you want to use uh, S3 market, then you can go ahead and update its setting. You also have a way to export the collections, right? So by default, it ships with the user's collection. So you can just go ahead and export the user collection, right? There's a detail around all of the fields that uh, a user schema contains, right? User's name, user author, and everything, right? And then there's something called rules, right? Rules tell who can do what, right? So list rule, somebody with the ID, with the sa same ID as the authenticated user can list the users, right? Somebody who is authenticated, their ID can be used to also view the collections, right? So it's like the owner, right? We're telling that the owner can view the records, list the records, update the records, edit the records, and do other things, right? Similarly, you can import the collections. You can configure the providers, right? So you can just go ahead and say, you know, create an account on GitHub and then, you know, create an application and then you can copy the details here to enable the GitHub authentication. You also have the token options and admins, right? Since the first user already gets created as an admin, you get an admin interface over here. You can just go ahead and create more admin, right? So admin are kind of super user or a su super users to your uh, pocket base instance right the very first collection is already available here right if you want to change a few things about it you can just go ahead and add new fields it ships with a name field which is of text type and an author field details you can just go ahead and add more fields to the core uh, core uh, schema of this field right so let us go ahead and create another collection say that we are building a blogging engine or a blog system right uh, what we'll do is we'll create something called posts right the type will be base and then we can go ahead and create new fields right so there could be a field for title right say the mean length is 100 which is a bit too much i think at this point but let's just keep it to it max length 100 it would be non-empty no it can be duplicate so let's just go ahead and create a new collection posts uh with the schema that we just provided and once the collection is created we can just go ahead and create new records so title was the only field required so we can just create new records using this panel right pocket base is awesome right so the moment we create it we get an error because we put the minimum character length for 100 characters this could be easily edited right you can just go ahead and edit the collection open the title let's make it 15 characters save the changes go ahead create a new record and just put something like pocket message awesome and it will let you create it right so the crowd is simple and the ux is just i think uh, very thoughtful around uh, creating collections right you have something called api preview also right which means that right from the collection you have a panel to see how uh, different uh, apis will work so the api preview mode helps you understand uh, about the kind of calls you could actually make to work with this data right so open the api preview mode says you no know, connect to this particular endpoint because 333 is the port that we use to run our instance it's updated and then we can use pb collection post to get a list of all of the posts it can start from record number one it can go till record number 50 it can have the filters like created filter or some full matching filter and then you can uh, just you know use the record and then show it in your ui right so get all of this right you just need to create a collection and then you know everything else is done for you right you just need to call the sdk and then call the necessary method you can go in the logs folder there's no logs for it because we are trying to see the logs against a post 
but it's not available yet, right? If you include request by admins, so we can see all of the logs uh, that are performed uh, for this entire DB, right? So collections are the heart of the system because uh, this is a backend as a service. So all of the data that you maintain uh, in the system are maintained in the terms of collections, right? You get all of the field types like a text, editor, number, boolean, email and everything. So every possible type that you can think of to represent an entity is available here. So every possible type that you can imagine or think of around, you know, creating entities and sufficiently representing them in a interface which can easily let you create data around that structure is all provided and available here. Right, you have a text field and a digital field if you need a markup as an input. You have number, boolean, email, URL, date, select. Right, so you get all of these options. So it's pretty exhaustive list of all sort of you know popular data types. Right. Besides collections, you have API rules and fil filter to guide and control who can do what with the collections. Right. Uh, which again I'd say follows a very uh, sort of a uh, easily digestible syntax right we can cover this in in a future video and then then you have client side SDK integrations right we already noticed on the home page that you know you don't write abstractions on top of uh, pocket base to kind of call uh, the APIs and then retrieve the results and then work with the data that's available in the DB it already ships with the SDK that you can download from NPM and then establish a connection with the DB by you know providing the URL where your pocket base instance is running and then you can easily retrieve collections through this collection method right you can tell about the collection that's containing mm, the records of a certain type and then you can call methods on top of it like get list get one create and delete and other things right so this is i think one of the key differentiator with uh, modern bas solutions that you know uh, the abstraction layer is already provided for you and pocket base is not left behind it offers you a solution to uh, directly establish a connection with the pocket base instance and then you know easily work with the records that are available in the, uh, in the pocket base db right so on the collections uh, on the collections front uh, you have this flexibility and um, so on the collections front you have this flexibility and uh, collection convenience functions which you can use to interact with the APIs and then your APIs can inter interact with the DB and you can do all sort of things with the data that's stored in the DB right we already noticed that you know authentication is also very simple to configure on the admin side Right. All it takes is to just enable it and provide the necessary details and then, you know, the same pocket base SDK can be used to uh, call uh, the functions to authenticate your users either with a password or through uh, one of the OAuth2 providers for social logins and stuff. You get files upload and handling and then eventually when everything is ready, you can just simply copy this uh, instance or download this instance on a server copy your data folder and then run the pocket based server as a long running service right or you can use docker to create a pocket based ready image and then you can you know um, use this container to deploy your pocket based instances and run it live i hope you found the video informative you found the video uh, kind of uh, sufficiently covering so the key elements and features offered to you through pocket base and you see a reason and a point in probably embracing it for your next product your next SaaS, your next mobile app or your next just masterpiece if you like the video do subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up to find more interesting content in your youtube feed see you in the next video bye bye